Hey guys, it's your girl, Erin the Renegade. Thank you so much for joining us here at Eight at the Table. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, um, Facebook, YouTube, all of that jazz. And remember this, we read the comments and we respond. So don't be around here thumb thugging because we gonna get with you now. But we love the engagement, however it comes. We really appreciate it. So today, June 19th, I wanna say happy Juneteenth and shout out to everybody who is celebrating. And for those who aren't, we're gonna talk about it. Um, so, you know, everyone knows I live up in New York now, but I'm from Houston. Um, and in Houston, I grew up celebrating Juneteenth, like going to parades on Juneteenth, having barbecues on Juneteenth, um, celebrating the emancipation of slaves that happened in 1865 in, um, in Galveston, Texas. So if some of y'all don't know, Galveston is like a little beach town, 45 minutes south of Houston. And um, in 1865, two years following the actual emancipation uh, proclamation by President Lincoln, um, they were set free. Um, it took two years for everything to happen, which kind of sucks because these people were, you know, giving away free labor and whatnot for two years after they had already um, officially been free. But I want one thing, I guess what one thing I want you guys to take from this is like, it's cool to celebrate stuff like this. Even if you just not learn about it, let's celebrate it. Like it's a big thing for us black people. It's a big thing for, you know, people who are in the diaspora, um, whether you're in the North, the, you know, East Coast, West Coast, or whatever. So um, new traditions are always good. And I wanna, in case you ever find yourself in like some weird trivia night or something, this is how you get the word Juneteenth. You got June, and then on the 19th, put them together, got you a nice little Juneteenth sandwich. So keep that in mind. And since we're celebrating new traditions, I think it's important to shout out to everybody in the LGBTQ community because it is Pride Month. You see, I got my rainbows, I'm ready for it. Um, just like everything else, we get new traditions and new holidays every year. So we're gonna celebrate it and, 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 and be a part of the conversation, be a part of the change. You know, it wasn't always smiled upon when the slaves were freed. It wasn't smiled upon, you know, when people were living their true selves and, and embra embracing their sexuality. So let's celebrate those people just like they're celebrating us. So happy Pride Month. Thank you, Aaron, for all of that knowledge. You definitely just put me up on game, to be honest. And I'm actually here with my boy, Esso. Mm. And, um, you know, it was very informative. And, and, you know, being from Texas, you probably know a little bit more than Rico. So I actually needed that. But that did trigger a thought for me. And that thought is, Esso. Uh-oh. <laughs> would you celebrate June 19th by going to a barbecue? Hear me out. Hear me out. By going to a barbecue with a Caucasian girlfriend. <laughs> If she was my girlfriend, definitely would take her with me to the barbecue. Why not? Do you think that like she might have like, like see my thing is like, you don't think that she might get uncomfortable trying to celebrate like, you know what I'm saying? A black holiday or a black independence day, like June Juneteenth. I mean, she would, she would need to know what's going on with my background. Mm -hmm. So she can't not, if, 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 if she was with me, she can't not just say, I'm not gonna go celebrate because that's a black thing. You know what I'm saying? Secondly, black people are very like um, forgiving people. So- Forgiving or unforgiving? Forgiving people. Okay. So we welcome white people into our stuff because you need them into it. To I think so? Definitely, yeah. definitely. I feel like we do sometimes. If, if you're going somewhere, uh -huh. And you bring a white girl or a white dude to an event, they're gonna embrace them because that's your people. But they're not of, gonna think about it like this, right? Think about like the race or the interracial like comments that are going on in today's world with the black women talking about, you know, ball players and such and such, dating the white women or the Spanish women, and you know, they're taking us away from them. So you don't think that that might cause some type of conflict for like a June, especially a Juneteenth thing. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest, I don't think so. Especially with me, but we talking about me, not the world. Like yeah. with, with the style of person, how I roll, 
I really don't care about what the rest of the people think. You know what I'm saying? And she would, and she, like I said before, she would need to be able to roll with me to do certain things that normal people wouldn't do because she's in the black lifestyle now. She's with me. So she has to know what's going on. She got to know what floats my boat, what I want to do, why I feel the way I feel. She needs to know more about my my own people because she wouldn't naturally know. Yeah. So she would definitely need to be there. And I and I really think that she would be embraced by the people there because white people that swerve with black people, they actually think differently and they move differently and they're more aware. They know about white privilege. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't act like white privilege doesn't go down. They know it goes down and they know why it goes down. And that's why they, they're some of the few that actually spark the change. You know what I'm saying? I had a white girlfriend in high school. And when I had the white girlfriend in high school, all of the black women in my high school was mad. I was one of the popular kids too. I played sports, you know what I'm saying? And they didn't like that, you know what I'm saying? And that was like, for my senior year, that was a big problem that I had because I was defending her. It was a lot of pressure, right? I mean, it is, but like, but I'm just thinking like, you know, like I'm learning more and more and more about Juneteenth, right? And yeah. I'm just trying to picture myself based on past experience bringing my white girlfriend there. Not saying that I wouldn't, because I would, mm -hmm. but I just feel like the, I just feel like there would be some side eyeing going on, like this nigga really with a white. Girl. <laughs> From you know what I'm saying, saying like, and I, I, I feel like, I feel like they're unfor more unforgiving than forgiving, but especially in today's climate. But you're talking about one side. You ain't talking about yeah. the men. You're talking no, about yeah, the, I'm not talking okay, about the men. exactly. Yeah, I talking I'm, about. Well, I'm talking about the people. <laughs> yeah. you, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'll take the men and say that the men are gonna be cool with it. Of Yo, course, yeah. if, 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 there you go. I and like then that, okay, look. And then you got some of the women that are cool with it. So you put the men with some of the women. You got majority. And that's why I said that they would be welcomed exactly. in where you got going on. Cause, because as much as the girls will be side-eyeing, your homeboys, your cousins, your family would be like, yo, Sherry, whatever her name is, you don't got to worry about that. Come over here. Come and drink with me. They always step up in those type of situations. Yeah, but I really feel like black people are... I really feel like black people... We we embody and embrace, embrace our culture as much as, like, for example, an Italian family. You know what I'm saying? Like back old school Italians would be like, you know, you got to marry an Italian. Mm -hmm. Climbing is definitely like, let's keep it in the culture. You think so? I, I, I feel like I see that more often. Like, don't get me wrong. All of my homies, we've all dated outside of our race. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I've been seeing the problems Especially like dated or been with somebody because dating been, and smash okay been, been with somebody been, yeah okay. yeah I mean like by real dating like okay, you know, gotcha, girlfriend gotcha. wifey gotcha. type shit gotcha. and um like one of my closest friends he has three older sisters and they're from they're African like from Africa oh that's a problem and exactly and they love black love which I have no problem against it but they love it so much to the point where one time I brought a white girl to their cookout, like, cause we have it every summer. And it was like- They couldn't believe it? Come on, Rico. But it yeah. wasn't like a problem, don't get me wrong, but it was like, come on, Rico, come on. Then then, then a, the year later, the, a year later, I had a black girl that I was dating and I brought her to like, this it is was better. Love. This, this is, is better, you but know what I'm saying? But you're still talking about the one gender. Yeah, because I'm thinking like Juneteenth is such a, is, is like, you're talking about slaves, right? You know, like think about the history. So unfortunately, I will for, the white woman has nothing to do with the slave that, slavery that happened back, back then, right? I In got you. Of, but you're talking about like, you were freeing from slaves and now you're gonna bring a white woman who technically is tied into some type of ancestry that was a part of it as well. So it might be a conflict of interest is what I'm saying. Can I say something though real quick? Uh -huh. For years, People thought that the 4th of July was when people were freed and stuff like that, right? For years, white people and black people party together for the 4th of July. For years, this Juneteenth now, because she knew what's going on, we didn't really know what was going on. We right. read about it. It was not really taught. People really didn't care about it. Blah, zay, blah. 
right? But we thought the 4th of July was when we all got free. This is when what's going on. And nobody cared like what you're saying. Yep. That's my point. Like, you're just dealing with the gender. Now, that same gender, it doesn't matter if it's Juneteenth, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, Father's Day. If you come around with a white girl, it's an issue. So it doesn't matter. So you try to take Juneteenth and try to make it seem like that that's going to be something that's going to be like, oh, well, you're going to bring the white girl here on Juneteenth. No, nigga, you're going to bring the white that, girl. That's no, no, but no, no, <laughs> no, but they come in if you bring the white girl anywhere. If you bring her to a, to a baby shower, how could you bring the white girl to my baby shower? If you bring her to the wedding shower, how you going to bring this white girl to my wedding shower? It doesn't matter. That's how they feel. But on the flip side, on, on the flip side, and I know we probably wasn't supposed to talk about this, but when the black girl walks through with the white boy, it, it don't be that type of pressure. Yeah, it's It'd be a love. bunch of excuses. Oh, it ain't a lot of black dudes out there. Oh, they're all locked up. I couldn't find one. Or, yo, they treat me bad, so I had to try something different. But when we say, yo, this is what I prefer, it's an issue. It's a problem. And I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. I think that we fake like we care because they make it a, such a big thing when we do. But technically, we don't care who you get. If we're not plugging it, why do I care who's plugging it? Yeah. White, black, Chinese, whatever. Yeah, like, he's the man that got the job. So who cares what's going on? I don't look at it and say, oh, my God, this white boy scooped up this black chick. It's one less black chick out there. We're in trouble now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not looking at it like that. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it as, yo, I hope that you found love. It's like the same thing that we got back to when we asked questions. It's like, if you're trying to, if you're letting someone find love, color and race shouldn't put any damper on that. You know what I'm saying? Love is love. We all need it. It doesn't have a color on it. And that's how I personally see it. Nah, I'm with you. I mean, I agree with you 100%. Like, I'm not the type of person that really care about if a African-American woman is dating outside of her race. I'm, with, I'm not even going to fake act like it's an issue. I'm actually high five them. I don't know. I don't know how you managed to, to be able to adapt to our culture because dating outside of a race is very hard when it comes to a, adapting to the culture. So any type of you you could adapt to a Spanish girl's culture. You would go, you, you would try to learn how to do the freaking salsa. You would be eating all Spanish food. You would be going a, to her, a, you, you would be going a, to her homeland. That's a, that's a, I'm Dominican too. I'm oh, saying. okay. But I'm, if, black, I'm but, black, white, but Spanish. If, okay, I'm, but listen, <laughs> if you wasn't from an all black guy, I'm not mixed with nothing, right? It doesn't matter, okay? If you meet a Spanish girl, you get into her lifestyle. Yeah, that's true. A, a, a Chinese chick that you might deal with, you're going to start to eat eat with chopsticks, you're going to start to learn what she likes to do, the soup she likes to eat. If you didn't eat sushi before, you eat sushi now. You got to try it. Like, that's just what it is. So you adapt to the lifestyle. So why would the white girl come over here and say, I don't eat sweet potatoes? I don't like macaroni and cheese. Fried chicken is trash. I can't get with it. Like, y'all all play taboo. I don't like taboo. Like, <laughs> come on. Like, stop it. You know what I'm saying? She's going to jump in and she's going to be the one throwing the shit up and they're going to be, yo, she's dope. She's different. Yeah, Mom, but like, lie. so you also got to be realistic too because dating outside of your race when it comes to, let's, let's, let's be real, right? Sure. Black and Spanish. Still both minorities. Yeah, they're close. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Black and Asian, we're still minorities, but they're like a- they're not close. But they're, but they're not close, right? But at the same time, you got, when you have black and white dating together, the reason why I feel like a lot of problems happen is because there's a lot of black and white problems that go on in the world. And I've been, on, I've been in that position where you got a white cop doing something to a black male or female, mm -hmm. and then- my white girlfriend is like, yeah, but why is he acting like that towards the officer? And I'm like, it does not matter how he's really acting towards the officer. So then you start to have a cultural difference right then and there. I feel like those cultural pressures that happen in the media, it does play a big part when it comes to adapting to each other's culture when it comes to black and white. You know what I'm saying? Because that's when I feel like things are actually really conflicting. Versus if I, you're right, if I'm dating a Spanish girl, I start, you know, eating all of that, you know, learning well, how to salsa. Call you all day. But you don't see a Spanish cop 
or they don't at least make it a, as big of a thing as a Spanish cop doing something to a black man or a black man doing something to a Spanish man so much, you know what I'm saying, as they do in white, the media versus white, or, white and black. You get me? Chinese too, because you, or now you, got you Asian, have that yep. a, 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 Asian people, like I've gotten more hate from them than white people, in my experience. You know what I'm saying? So I've dated girls that was half half black, half white, half this, half that, mixed and all that. And that's where I got the most hate from. It was less hate from white people. It was dope. That's where I get the hate from. But you still eat Asian food. You still deal with the culture. People still want to go to China and Tokyo and all these wild places. They want to go to Fi Fi and all this other stuff, the Philippines and all that. They still going. That's why I keep telling you, black people are forgiving people. You enslave them, you talk about them, they still just be like, oh, well, he's not like the rest of them, so I'm gonna give them all a chance. Black people, we don't get that type of chance. You get cut off. As soon as you don't do something right, cut off. You get cut off by your own people as soon as you don't do right. something right. They'll let a white boy make a mistake, and you a black dude, you make that same mistake, he's cutting you off, whether he's black, white, Hispanic, or not. So you have, so it's a, it's, I really think that we're so, we, we forgive people so much because we never are, which is, which is backwards. So you would think that we would go forward like, I'm not going to forgive nobody, but we know how that feels. And we're known to reciprocate that. We don't want to make you feel like an outsider or whatever. If, 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 if you're playing basketball, if the white boy is dope, he good. Where? <laughs> He good. Yo, you can stay, you can nickname him White Chocolate, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Yo, he's good. He, he can come play ball all, all day long. But if you're a black dude and you're playing baseball and you want to go on the field, it's not the same reception. Think about it. Nah, I know. I play baseball. Exactly. <laughs> so it's not, baseball. it's not the same reception. So, it, I mean, no, no, no matter where you look, we're going to be left or right. Right? When you add white people or Asian people or Italian people to the mix, for us as black people, we're thinking that that's going to make it better, more diverse understanding. So you think we're more like, I don't want to say we, do you think that the black community is more, I guess, for unifying? Is yeah, that what you're that, to say? Oh, definitely. If, if if you watch movies, that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? That they're always trying to come together. They're always trying to just do the right thing for the betterment of the people because we're always on the low end. So, so why would we not want to? I'm just, all right, I agree with you, but mm -hmm. we also got to shed light onto the other side of the topic because you know what people are going to say, right? Sure. We're so much about coming together, but realistically, the black community in America, mm -hmm. I'm not speaking in totality, the black community in America is, you know, infamously known for separating from each other. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of funny to me because I agree with a lot of what you're saying. And I personally feel like as a black man, you know what I'm saying? Um, we have the most, we target ourselves and we have the most targets on us from the outside. You know, like there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I feel personally like black People don't always help black people in certain business. Agreed. I feel like I feel like we don't come together in that aspect. I feel like we actually see more each other as more as competitors. As in a barrel. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, plus you have the outside factors from the world, and then even our women now, like the African American woman, they put a target on us if we step remotely halfway outside of our race. You know. So I personally feel like when it comes to coming together. I feel like we have a lot of room for improvement because we're so welcoming, right? We'll take this one, we'll take that one, we'll take that one, we'll take that one, but we don't take each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the crazy part to me. I'm gonna give you an analogy with sports if we got time, right? Stephen A. Smith was just on television talking about how the basketball player is the leader of, of the free world. Okay, they step out on George Floyd, they donate their money, they put the t-shirts on, they do all that stuff to try to change the world, right? But right in basketball, they won't take up for the black coach. 
They got the power to change the whole entire world. They got people looking at George Floyd differently. A cop really went to jail this time. People know about Juneteenth now. Like, I celebrated Juneteenth for the first time last year after George Floyd's death on some real shit. You know what I'm saying? I went to my first Juneteenth barbecue in Corona, social distance at my cousin's house, the whole shit. You know what I'm saying? But it just doesn't measure out all, all, all the time to, to me. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like that we just on the low end of what we got going on. And until we, until we figure out ways to come together, we always gonna have problems. And, we, and it's always simple to target us. Why? Because if you target a white person or somebody like that, they really going to come look for you. If you target a, a black person, they feel like that you're going to get a chance to get away with it. This is my personal opinion, and I'm not saying I'm right. It's just what I believe. If there was no interference with the black Wall Street and any of that, I personally feel like the black community today would stand strong. Like, If I had to give an example, I would say like a Jewish community. And I believe that we would be, we would have that type of power. We would have that type of, you know, um, infrastructure, foundation. We will also have that leverage with capital and finances and real estate. And I feel like we would be teaching each other and our offspring, you know, how to stay and stay in this light. I feel like once it got broken down, and you know, I'm I'm gonna go a little bit left, but I feel like once it got broken down and it was stripped from us, we had to start back at zero, right? And it was not only stripped from us, but it was kept from us. So it got exhausting because you build and it was taken. You build and it was taken. You build and it was taken. So then we started doing other things that put us in position. We started doing other things. Um, I mean, this goes, it goes so, it gets so deep, but you don't you know think that saying? the Jews was broken down? They were broken down and they built themselves yeah, up. Yeah, but they were also, after they were broken down, they were also helped back up. The black community has been broken down since that time I was and was about to never get to held back up. I got you because even when people come over here from different countries, they give them money to start businesses, to do things. The black people never got that. They never got their mule, they never got their land, they never got nothing. So I understand that, I totally feel you. But with the Jewish community, who I say that they're as closest to us because of the, um, they've been burnt, they've been killed, they've been slaughtered, right? But they always found a way to stick together. You ain't coming between no Jewish people at all. Not for anything. They're sending their kids to the school. Even when Corona mandates is going on, no. You can't have church, they doing it on the street. They fighting the police, they bailing each other out. So it, I'm telling you, it's a mind state. Follow me for a second, okay. answer this, right? We're talking about what if black people were never interrupted, right? By never interrupted, I mean there was no civil rights movement. Like once Juneteenth happened, every we were allowed to do what we wanted to do. We could have built, we had doctors, we had our own lawyers. We had our own schools, we had our own funding, and we were never interrupted. The, the things that we built was never destroyed. You know, there was never that target on our back to keep us down. Where do you think we would be as a culture? I think we would be financially dominant. I think that the finances is what actually keeps us from being where we need to be. Because right now, if there was nobody around to stop us from building, to stop the Black Wall Street and all the rest of that, we would have had a chance to pass down the financial knowledge. There wouldn't have been as much racism around because we would have been cool with you saying, you can have what you have and we have what we have. And if you want to coexist, cool, but we don't need each other. We would coexist because we want each other. And then if you take it further, in every other a a a a aspect of life, black people has been dominant from really being the ones that invent lights and all different types of stuff for nursing and caring and all these different types of stories that they tell you now that the black person was behind the guy and this white man took the credit for it. So if you add financial literacy and dominance with, with money, there's no way, shape, or form that we wouldn't be at the top of the food chain. I mean, I think you have a very solid point. I want to actually get 
somebody else's opinion too on this conversation because I think we're having what? <laughs> I just want to hear it from an actual woman's standpoint. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, 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 we yeah. too, man. Let's bring in a woman. Of course. So, um, Amanda, where you at? I'm right here. <laughs> hey, I see you. What the? Look at the what's fit. Up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? What up, my melanin queen? Yes. <laughs> Juneteenth. Yes. So right now we're what are we talking about. What are we talking about. All right, cool. So we're talking. To, we're talking realistically about race and everything like in totality with race stemming from Juneteenth, right? right? Which, you know, is the day that we were essentially freed from slavery. Mm-hmm. Now, I actually, let's, let's bring it back. So I actually want to have, a, I have a personal question for you. Not a personal question, but a question that we already discussed. But now that we have a woman here, I think it would be great to hear. Um, My opinion. A That's black woman's opinion or African American woman's opinion. If we were celebrating Juneteenth, right, at some event and you seen somebody that you know, maybe you're close to them, brings in a white girl to the Juneteenth barbecue, you know, obviously she's most likely the only white girl there. How would you feel or what like what would you think? Would you be inviting? <laughs> like, like, what would, like, what would go through me, your mind? It's really a funny question because me personally, I try very hard to not feel no ways about no white people. You know, like I try really hard, but it's like if it's Juneteenth, you know, I get there's a significance of that day. I just feel like it's a time and a place. Mm-hmm. But if I that's feel his like, woman, like if that's his woman, is he that can't your bring woman, his woman, or is that somebody you dating right now you that you feel your, like you just got to bring along? You you, you, you could her. come to Fourth of July next week, two weeks from now. But if I'm dating her, right, and she's white, I'm supposed to leave her at home. What about exposing her to the knowledge of what we've gone through? Don't you think that that would? I mean, carry over? is this event going to be a sit down, talk about history? Uh, is she going to be gaining any knowledge at this event, or is it just like black friends and family just coming together, just having a good time in celebration? Because Fourth of July, we don't sit around talking about. Shit, like, but, but that's my point. But but the Fourth of July, we thought was when we was free too. But you were still partying with white people wherever they wanted. And secondly, don't you think that the barbecue might spur on the conversation with her and her counterpart maybe later and say, "Yo, what is this that y'all are celebrating?" I get Juneteenth now. I see how 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 y'all come together. Babe, let me explore this a little bit more. Maybe we should throw the Juneteenth celebration and I should invite some of my white family Whoa. to expose them okay. to what's going on. Okay, what hold about on. That? I, I, like- I, I feel like in my head, I figured out <laughs> where my issue lies. Okay, go ahead. So, because I feel like in New York, Juneteenth has always been a thing, like nationally but in new york we really started to acknowledge it and celebrate it yes, i yes, feel yes. like we need we need some time like can we get some time to ourselves first before like you know we start you know winding it up like I, and i'm just being for real but but, but on the re- okay, you can't really you could actually like before the event like you know explain to her what you know juneteenth is if you really yeah. But, you know, I would feel very uncomfortable if a white girl came to this Juneteenth event and she's just like, oh, so this is the day you guys were emancipated, huh? When nobody even have been talking about it. Oh, like, you, can feel, do that. you can feel the but, need to say something. But can I just say something? Martin Luther King, right, had a whole squad of black leaders, Jesse Jackson, all the rest of them. They was all on the forefront, but they had a lot of white people that donated money that was out there marching as well. And those people understood the plight of the black person and they would be welcomed in the Juneteenth celebration because they're donating more money than the black people. So that's why we got to pay attention to because if we have white people that are actually on the side that we're on, we would need to embrace them for us to get forward. If we keep doing like this to the ones that want to rock with us, we still going to be in the same place in my mind. I, it's like you have valid points, but it's like my points are are still as valid. No, they're not. You know, they're what like, you want it to be. No, no, because also <laughs> I'm thinking like you're comparing to mm-hmm. 
you know, Martin Luther King and civil rights movement mm -hmm. and the white people that wanted to help that were fully invested in that movement because they that was a crucial time. Like we all know that the world should not have been that, you know, been that mm -hmm. way right now. We're kind of just celebrating something good. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's just like you probably you don't have the same understanding. And, and it's kind of like the white people that kind of just be like too like Black Lives Matter, and nobody even asked you. Nobody even, like, we're not even talking about that. You're just kind of just trying to put yourself out there that you're Black Lives Matter because you're around Black people. You know what I'm saying? I think, I, okay, so look, I think, like, I was kind of saying that I don't think it's wrong. I think it's the right thing to do, but I know to bring your white girlfriend to a Juneteenth, if, if you were in an inter interracial relationship. Mm -hmm. But I do see... This is what I was gonna say. This is what I was saying. I yeah, see the problem that. that was gonna happen. Now, I think personally, it's because there's a lot of emotion and pain that went through um, the time of being slaved and being freed, and and even after that. You feel what me? I'm saying? Like 365 days is now, one day is gonna make a bigger. I mean, it's, 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 it's not about. But it's, it's not, one day. Yeah, I, I don't even day. think. I don't even think. I don't even think it's that. It's the one day. I just mm -hmm. think that right now it's. I feel like there's finally a, a breakthrough, right? Not not entirely, but there's finally a breakthrough where certain things are getting recognized, certain things are getting celebrated, and kind of like how Amanda said, like it's just some need some time. To, but you know like, what that's technically called reverse racism. It's that is a thing. that is a that, thing. It's the same thing. So if the, if we got a black yeah. cookout and I don't want a white person there, that's reverse racism. It's the same thing. I got white friends that play basketball. When they get on basketball court, the first thing that the black dudes say is, "Man, what's up with this white? Who's who who who's picking the white boy? And he's the best dude out out there." So let me give you an. You know what I'm saying. Let me ask you this question. That makes right? us no better than them, technically. I, I, th no, I agree, a hundred percent. But. Let's talk also about reality, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just say hypothetically, and I believe there is, but I don't know 100%. There is a day where, um, let's just say like uh, Jewish people were celebrating the Holocaust, or not the Holocaust, but you know, the ending of the Holocaust, mm -hmm. right? Initially, if you know, the first five, 10 years, a black person was showed up to their celebration, I'm pretty sure that they would get the side eye too. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's kind of where we're at with it as well. It's like we're finally getting that breakthrough. Yeah, we're welcoming. Yeah, we are appreciative. But also let this be a time for us to come together. It's like a family a family party. Sometimes you don't bring your friends to your family party. You have to let your family be a family. You know, And I feel like that might be the one time where you had to be like, yo, sit this one out this year. <laughs> and then next year well, we work well, your that. relationship is going to be trash I gotta make, after I got to make a PSA it, to my, it, to my community. If she's with a Spanish dude, not to say that you were, but if you was with uh, a Spanish dude and he went to go celebrate something, he said, yo, sit this one out. You got to come next year. You're not, you're not messing with him no more. I mean, but to his be Spanish honest, is minority it's, too. It it's not matter even like I would home. say, like, literally sit this one out. I just wouldn't. He would. It just she wouldn't be invited. <laughs> yeah. You just ain't sit, yo, sit Listen, this one man, out, bro. I'm not. I I would not. Me Who, personally. Who's the loyalty to first? No, your counterpart that you really supposed mm -hmm. to be in love with, or your people. Well, I'll be honest with you, right? I've dated many and had real relationships That's with with, with many me. white with many white <laughs> women, right? But I always said to myself, like, I know I could not forever be with a white woman because me personally, mm -hmm. I wanted a child with melanin. And I already lack some. You know what I'm, I'm kind of beige. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel me? So like, so I for me, knowing what I want and knowing, you know, the type of family that I would like to have for the tradition because of the culture that I have, you know, I do have a white family and I do have a black family and I do have a Spanish family, right? But I'm seen as one. You okay, know? but when you go around the white family, are, are 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 you comfortable? Now, yes, but it wasn't always like that. Why? Because I was so different, and I, that's one of my. Did you feel that way, or did no, they feel that it's, way? It, I listen. I because I had three different families with three mm -hmm. different cultures. Mm -hmm. I I believe it's a blessing, right? Because I was able to see literally how different every family is, and I had to essentially be three different people 
for three different families. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't be the same way I was with, with my white family, with my black family. I couldn't be the same way I was with my black family, with the Spanish family. And I had to adapt to three different cultures growing up. And I understand that that's why like, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. So when you have like cultural differences and celebrations like a Juneteenth, I understand where there could be a problem where you bring a, a, a white woman to it and everybody else, not a problem with her. She might be a fine, she might be okay. But everybody else, I know how that that room would feel. You know what I'm saying? But everybody got got black families in here. Somebody's coming to a celebration with a white girl. Yeah. And it don't be like in my family, the families that I've been around, it don't be a lot of friction when the white girl comes. But this is Juneteenth. It's a different yeah. celebration. Like yeah. this well, is you know what? I'm not gonna lie, so had I seen a white girl at a Juneteenth event, I'm nine times out of 10, not gonna feel no ways, you know? But this is just the feeling behind it. I might actually stay to the side like, really? He had a ringer? But you know? That's all move, it'll be. Yeah, <laughs> move about my day. Like nobody's really gonna care. Saying. Maybe until she opened her mouth and if say she some something shit. stupid, then he gotta get her up out, out the spot. <laughs> and don't bring her no more. I got you. <laughs> but if she don't say nothing dumb and she's on point chilling, I, I just don't see people just women, because we're not talking about the guys. You said the women would have the problem. I, I don't see her going up to her or saying, Rico, yo, yo, don't bring her back. Yo, she's she's killing the vibe right now. She, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't think nobody's gonna really care. But like the thing is some some things don't have to be said for you to know what's going on. And I just feel like that's probably a situation that that would be like, I'm not in that position, for me, so I can't speak on it entirely, but I definitely have been the oddball out. I definitely have been that one black guy in the whole so white room. I. And, and you feel it. How about the white room? I dated a girl that was white and Chinese. Mm -hmm. So the white people's talking and they speaking Chinese, talking, talk about me crazy. Like, what are you doing here with him? <laughs> blase, 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 crazy. Okay. And she was a white girl with it had blonde hair. You wouldn't even know. You just look at her like she's something. Yo, and everywhere we went, they would be speaking Chinese. And she'd be like, come on, let's go. I'm like, yo, what's up? They don't like black people in here.